Hello again from me, Pam Rhodes. Welcome to a very special edition of Sunday Night Live. Back in 1972, a young man called Noel Tredinick was appointed as the Director of Music for All Souls Church in Langham Place in central London. Now, that was 50 years ago, and over the five decades since, Noel's ministry of worship through song and music has become loved and recognised across this country and indeed across the world. Well, in 1988, Noel brought the All Souls Orchestra and a huge choir here to the Royal Abbot Hall and that was the start of a series of really popular annual concerts. There are about 5,000 Christians waiting inside all wanting to say happy 50th anniversary prom praise.
Hello, my name's Giles. I play the trumpet and I first sat on this stage in the Royal Albert Hall in 1990, 32 years ago. Having trained just over the road at the Royal College of Music at the time, I've always enjoyed playing with the orchestra because it's just so different from playing with any other classical orchestra when you've got a bunch of committed Christians giving their heart out to Jesus and it just makes the whole evening so special. I'm Vivian uh, and I'm a viola player and I've been a viola player with the All Souls Orchestra for nearly 40 years. I first joined when I was a student. Um, I became a Christian when I was a student um, in my second year at the Royal Academy of Music uh, and I was studying to become a professional musician and um, I'd heard about the All Souls Orchestra and we'd actually been to see them because we had some friends who were in it um, and um, we we, we became Christians um, and um, I started to play when I was in my second year at Music College and I've been playing ever since on and off and done many of these concerts at the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, it's an absolute delight to be playing today on its 50th anniversary. My name is Jeff Howard. I've brought my choir Cambrensis all the way from Cardiff today to perform in prom praise here at the Albert Hall. I think they're all really excited. I've performed here before several times and also in a previous prom praise I played the piano. And to be able to take part in an event which literally fills a building like the Albert Hall with God's praises I think is something that you know, even a non-Christian would love to hear and love to experience. It's going to be so exciting. My name is Elaine Scott, I come from Amersham in Buckinghamshire and uh, I have been a member of the orchestra for 37 years and because I love the Lord and I particularly love to use the musical gifts that God has given me through music, through the gift of music, it's just such a joy to uh, see so many people in, under one roof praising God simultaneously. So it's such a privilege to, um, and I've just seen so many lives changed because of it. Hello, I'm Anando Mukherjee, I'm a tenor, and I'm part of the octet or the semi-chorus that's premiering Michelle Yu's beautiful and inspiring anthem, One in the Name, and I'm the tenor soloist in that piece. Well, it's a dream come true because as an opera singer, but also as a Christian and part of the All Souls family, prom praise is always the event of the year. and. Of course, I've known about it for so many years and been part of the All Souls family and have sung many times with the orchestra and the chorus, and Noel and I go back a long way. But to make my debut in, in prompt praise on his 50th anniversary at the Royal Albert Hall, well, as they say, my cup runneth over and my heart is full. So it's a dream come true and a great privilege and honour to be asked. I'm so excited, Pam. So I'm going to be uh, playing Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, selections from that such famous piece it's like an infusion of classical music and jazz and it's my prom praise Royal Albert Hall debut it's the first time I'm playing here so I'm super excited to play with the fantastic All Souls Orchestra and uh, with the orchestra's conductor emeritus Noel it's just so exciting and to think of so many Christian musicians coming together from well around the world I know some people have flown in it's just going to be Awesome, I can't wait, I'm so excited. We love prom praise. We just love singing hymns. And, and we've been singing at prom praise for 25 years. We couldn't possibly miss this one. And in fact, we got withdrawal symptoms because of the pandemic and COVID stopped a prom praise for a couple of years. But here we are again. Oh, and we're loving it. It's so special because there's such a variety of hymns and music and uh, we, we get the organ playing on its own solos and we have the soloists who, who join us and we, we enjoy that very much. It's just a, I think it's the variety. Well, none of us would be here tonight without the vision of the rector at All Souls Church back in 1972, Michael Bourne. So, Michael, how did it all begin? Well, we were really catching up at that time because uh, music had done some massive uh, challenges since the war. And the idea of uh, even guitars or modern music from America was quite uh, a shock to the system over here. But gradually some of us got organised and we produced a book that many people will know called Youth Praise that went all around the world and filled this hall a couple, um, more than once. 
Uh, but uh, then at rallies in London, people were getting fed up with the guitar. And the question was, we got so much in our Christian heritage, so much of wonderful music uh, from our creator, so much that we can share for all ages, not just young people who like guitars. But how do we solve it? And that was when I saw the last night of the proms walking into my uh, living room in London. And I saw it at that moment, it clicked. Why can't we do the same sort of thing, but make it the singing part, being Christian and being a wonderful opportunity to praise God and to celebrate with the wonder of music in all its richness and with an orchestra. And this would also enable many people from churches all over the country who have perhaps small groups uh, and, and so on, but they can come and share singing with thousands and thousands of people to a wonderful orchestra, a great choir, and hearts lifted to heaven by the glory of worshipping God. And then I suppose that must have been around the time that Noel Tredinick joined you. We went to advertising for a new organist or choir director. We went through a lot of lists, but when we did the interviewing, there was one person who stood out beyond everybody else, and that was Noel Tredinick. Not least of what he could play, but the way in which he could manipulate, harmonise, arrange, uh, and uh, all together, when, when we got him to do it sort of freehand without any music in front of him, it was so creative. So we said, that's the man. Little did we know then what this man was going to be. With his huge talents, his ability to handle orchestras, to orchestrate music, and to inspire others to, to serve Christ in this way. Little did we know, we started fairly amateurishly with anybody in the church who could play an instrument because I always felt if you did that, you ought to be able to have an opportunity to praise God with your instrument. If you're singing with a voice, you do it in the choir. But what did you do if you played the violin or a trumpet? And so uh, we started like that, but rapidly it grew into the orchestra that Noel made it. And uh, uh, it might have been initiated by that idea that night but from then on, it was all Noel's um, creation. And we owe him more than anything can say, really, to the whole church uh, in Britain and abroad for his inspiration, his Christ-centeredness, his abilities, and the way in which prom praise grew out of its confines of all souls, then to the Barbican, and then eventually to the Royal Albert Hall, where it is now safely back home again. How does it feel to be here 50 years on at the Royal Albert Hall at this very special anniversary concert? Well, I always love coming. I've come probably every time, uh, almost every time. And uh, uh, coming back now for the 50th anniversary, it's very moving to think 50 years. Uh, they've passed so quickly and so thrillingly, and there's so much to praise God for. So I'm very thankful to be here. and. Uh, to join in worship as really nowhere else you can do it in, in this life, a foretaste of what it's going to be like in heaven. And here is that young man who started building the All Souls Music Ministry 50 years ago, Noel Tredinick. Well, you can imagine I need to pinch myself to really think, is it really 50 years? That's half a century. Uh, from the time when Michael Bourne at my interview said, Noel, I want you to start an orchestra. It was something that I had done as part of my degree, so that I, I was raring to go to form an orchestra. And I remember the little cyclicized invitation uh, sheets that we ran off, and they were to fill in their name and their instrument, and when they were free, and what their experience was. So that's how the orchestra started, 50 years ago. And then gradually it built up. In fact, it built up quite quickly, because All Souls Langham Place as a church is right there in the centre of London north of Oxford Circus, right next to BBC Broadcasting House. Yes, a central uh, capital church uh, in every sense. And it, it attracted musicians, opera singers, and uh, people in symphony orchestras, as well as lots of music students. So it was no hardship to form an orchestra. In fact, up to that point, it was almost a sin not to form an orchestra, so that people with instrumental gifts could actually begin to use their gifts, worshipping God and leading the congregation wonderfully. Was that really 50 years ago? It was in 1972. And then Prom Praise came along, and uh, it was wonderful not only to have the worship led by this group within All Souls, but we began to travel around and then establish our own outreach program. When I went to All Souls in 1972, uh, already there, had, there was an established uh, four-part choir, actually a vague, almost a chorus 
almost a choral society. John Stott had been the rector, Michael Bourne had recently taken over as the church leader, the senior pastor. And uh, on that occasion, uh, it was uh, something that the church had done for some time, to have oratorio evening services. On that occasion, they would sort of contract in an orchestra, but the choir was of that standard to, uh, on a Sunday night, uh, present uh, an oratorio because of its biblical content, and then John Stott or Michael Bourne will give a sermon. So it was a choir that I took over uh, in, and inherited and enjoyed directing, and uh, I began to write music for that choir as well. So that when we then developed the orchestra, it was very natural, particularly in the worship services and in the early prom praises, to say, well, we'll have the All Souls Choir on parade as well. But then the day came, ten years after our first prom praise, 1987. The first prom praise had been in All Souls Church, and most of them, uh, up to that time. And then we wanted, of course, to come home, where the spiritual home of prom praise really is, because it is a Christian last night of the proms. Of course, we wanted to come to the Royal Albert Hall, and we wanted the arena to be empty so that promenaders could be there with their church banners and with their flags, and with them actually not as it were, generating national fervor or patriotism. But actually, in our Christian last night of the proms, it was God that we wanted to celebrate and worship Jesus Christ as Lord of creation, as Lord of the music, as Lord of heaven and earth. So gradually, the choir needed to expand. And so we began to have hundreds of people coming to join our prom praise gathered choir. And in some ways, that was a way of disseminating our ideas and our music because they learnt music for the concerts and then they would take it back to their own churches and we know of lovely occasions when they were performing. And uh, in some ways the format hasn't changed. We still have choral items and tonight we have some great versions of To God Be The Glory and In Christ Alone. And, uh, the, and we also have orchestral music. So there's some music by John Williams, the film composer. I'm conducting uh, Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin. And uh, there's some lovely classical music as well. So choir music, orchestra music, always getting the audience to sing. Not Land of Hope and Glory, or if we do Land of Hope and Glory, we actually change the words and put some Christian words in to Elgar's Pomp and Circumstance March Number 1. Uh, and then finally, uh, a chance for a soloist, both a vocal soloist and an instrumental soloist, to be featured as well. So soloists, choirs, congregational singing, and orchestral music, right from the beginning has been the ingredient that prom praise, if you like, brings together in a wonderful way. When Noel retired after 48 years, who could possibly fill his shoes? Well, this talented musician and minister, Michael Andrews. So actually, I, I'd known Noel for about 10 years or so. I came to All Souls, I came to a carol service after a friend invited me. I was going to another church at the time. And I was just moving houses and I thought, oh my word, there's an orchestra in this church in the centre of London. So I went up to Noel and I said, I'd love to do some arrangements and some orchestrations. And Noel was so kind, he said, oh yes, come, come and meet me. And before I knew it, I think I'd written three orchestrations for a Royal Albert Hall concert and didn't know, didn't know what was going on. But uh, all these years later, um, it was amazing to see that uh, um, there was this role to take over from Noel. And I, I just threw my hat in the ring thinking there must be so many amazing capable amazingly capable people that that could apply for it and of course they did um and i i just felt incredibly honored to be picking up the baton and and, and uh, running prom praise <laughs> here in but i took the job thinking do you know what the role is all about encouraging people to praise god and worship him and to use our musical gifts to praise him so i'm simply almost a coordinator of musical gifts and, and, and encouraging audiences to sing and praise God. So I just remind myself all the time, that's what Noel's done all those years. And that's my mission to keep on doing that, is encouraging people to praise and worship God with all that they have. I'm so excited after three years of not having prom praise that we'll have thousands of people singing together in the nation's favourite concert hall again. So I'm just thrilled that we're able to do this again and we're going to have so many people praising and worshipping God at the Royal Albert Hall this evening and celebrating 50 years of amazing music ministry here in the heart of London.
When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, He will hold me fast. I could never keep my hope through life's terrible path. For He saves our hearts to love. Christ will hold me fast. Precious in His holy sight, He will hold me fast. He'll not let my soul be lost. His promises shall last. But by Justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life. He will hold me fast. Till my faith is turned to sight. When he comes at night. Deborah Clemmy, everyone. Thank you, Deborah. And Keith and Christian Getty. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Christian. I came here with my mum and dad and a kid. We went here for a week in London when I was a kid, middle, middle of my teens. And Sunday night, we decided to go to All Souls Church. And as chance would have it, the orchestra were playing. They opened with Joy to the World. They sang Our God Reigns. Um, I remember most of the program. and. Uh, and the first time I'd seen an orchestra play hymns, and I just thought this was the most incredible thing. And um, my dad said to me afterwards, would you like to play in an orchestra like this? And I said, no, I'd like to conduct an orchestra like this. <laughs> and so we started then working towards the, the New Irish and uh, launched, that, launched that a couple of years later when I was 18 uh, on the back of that. But in between times, I got to know Noel a little bit, got to follow what they did. And, and this combination of using the classical arts of actually being serious about the Bible uh, and, and, uh, and also then through both contemporary and historical church music helping families and churches was just, it was such a, it was the thing that really launched me into doing church music. So I owe these people a tremendous de deal. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. 
I think if we're Christians and we're looking towards heaven, you know, as our home, then then it changes how we think about our art and our legacy in the sense that I am standing on the shoulders of those who've gone before me and I'm simply taking the baton of those people and passing on to the next generation. So I think basic common sense through to basic humility says we take the great things that we have learned from and we try to write, grow those forms. So that, that's what I've tried to do as a writer in the first half of my career and not as a writer publisher with with 10 writers working for our publishing company, those guys are taking on the mantle and I'm trying to help them. So I think part of it is that. But I think honestly, as a dad uh, uh, and somebody who's a, a church leader, as if we love the people around us, it's our responsibility to make sure each generation know the great hymns of the faith. Because we, I, want, we, I drove out our girls to school last month. We do a hymn of the month each month in Christen can talk about that but um, you know we did Be Them My Vision and I took the girls to school and went Be Them My Vision O Lord of My Heart that, that's what I want them to think about their life then Be Them My Wisdom as they go to school or go onto their iPads or watch nonsense of television uh, or Spotify I want them that Christ's wisdom will be there Be Them My Breastplate one day I want them when they have temptation I'm no longer there I want him to be the sword for the fight and riches I heed not nor man's empty praise when life comes and success or disappointment comes. I want them to say, riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. And as they face, face sickness and death, I want them to sing, high king of heaven. So that's a gift, but that's a gift that if when, I, when we taught our kids, we give them that as a gift for 50 years. You know, there are many modern songs talking about our hearts, but they're not gonna last 50 years. Whereas Be Them My Vision is a gift we've given to them for 50 years. So the challenge to parents and to grandparents and to worship leaders and to pastors is love your congregation enough to make sure they have a good canon of the great hymns of the faith. I, I don't care if it's more of a contemporary church, traditional, orchestra, pipe organ, band, rock band, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure somewhere in the middle of it, there's a canon of songs that we can grow old, that become the foundations and the sung grammar of what we believe. It's wonderful to be back here. There's nowhere better to sing well, than the Royal is, Albert this Hall, is right? The <laughs> greatest concert hall in the whole world. It's and, such uh, a privilege to get you to know, be here. From the history to the surrounding, to the surrounding, to the to the the, the awesomeness of the building, but yet the intimacy of the building. It, it, it's quite unique on the world stage, and uh, and yet to take this space and to sing these great yeah. truths of other believers is yeah, yeah. pretty fantastic. Yeah, of, all, of all the halls we play in, uh, every year. You know, this is still this is still you know special beyond words, and uh, like I say honored to be a small part. This this movement, both the work of All Souls Church and John Stott, and the work of the All Souls Orchestra and Grand Prix. Without them, I wouldn't have written hymns today. And so to be here tonight, to be able to say thank you to the Lord for His faithfulness and thank these people for their work is a really special thing. We're also excited to have our family with us tonight, both sets of parents and our, our four girls and a couple of our nieces. We hadn't seen them for many months because we live over in the States. And so it's a special night to have them here in this space and have them singing. They love these sorts of events, so it's great to have them here. Yeah. And if you hear kids misbehaving during the concert, They're not ours. is there somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> somebody else. <laughs>
My name is Charlie Screen. I'm the new rector of All Souls. I've been there about a year and it's been hard work, but yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. We're going to be singing today all about God's faithfulness, uh, God's promise, God's hope is an anchor for the soul. And souls sing. And to have good um, Bible-filled words for us to sing that live in our hearts, that we take with us into work and into challenging situations, that is actually, it, it just gives great courage and comfort to Christian people as they live their lives out in the rest of London. It's incredible to be able to get people together like this. It's the 50th anniversary of the orchestra, but it's the two years of COVID that we've just lived through. And to be able to bring everyone together, the, the tech team and the stagehands and the orchestra and everyone else um, are just buzzing because we're able to put this on. We're going to be filling the Albert Hall with people to sing God's praises and to, to hear and think about a God who is utterly reliable. And we've seen that the last two years. Uh, I'm going to be saying that, that maybe human beings thought they had everything fixed and sorted. And we've seen that is not true. Uh, the, the world and its problems are bigger than us. And so to come together and to sing together, to think together about a God who is like an anchor, um, it's just such a great occasion and such an encouragement to be together to do that. I was at the first prom praise all those years ago and it, for me it was a magical time. I was playing in the Royal Artillery Orchestra in the army down at Woolwich and my mother sent me a little snippet out of the Life of Faith magazine asking if anybody wanted to come along and play for this Christian orchestra. And to me, it was just wonderful to get together with other Christians and pray before we started playing. And uh, it was just the start of a great road for me. Well, being at the 50th in the Royal Albert Hall, this hall is so special as we've been here so many times. And in the military, I was here so many times as well, but it really is a very special opportunity to be able to share with all these people in the in the building but not only in the building uh, as, a, as a hall as it were as a concert hall but around the world because it's being beamed out and uh, just to think that people that we'll never meet are actually entering into what we're doing tonight before each concert we always have the opportunity to pray together which again is very different from a secular setting where it's totally the opposite in many respects but we have this common bond of faith together and uh, to be able to pray next to someone and, and uh, share some of the things that are going on in our lives it's just a, a great thing and to really encourage the audiences each time to enter into what we're doing and to be a part of the whole concert. We just pray that coming to Jesus, sitting at his feet, coming to you, Father, and realizing that you invite us into your family as sons and daughters through the blood of Jesus, may that be the thing that people leave the Royal Albert Hall this evening foremost in their minds, and that the music would have brought it to life so powerfully. So we pray, Father, we pray for your spirit in each of us. Help us to worship you this evening. Help us to glorify your name. Amen. Amen. Graham Kendrick, who's performing in this anniversary concert, can look back over many years of prom praise memories. The fact that Noel um, started to gather people who were brilliant um, uh, classical orchestral musicians and give them a place to play was really, really important um, to, uh, um, to provide that platform. And, you know, here we are all these years later.
for me, one of the things that I, I reflect on with orchestral music compared to me as a sort of singer-songwriter is the sheer sonic breadth and, and a variety and, you know, this, the, the moods and the atmospheres that can be conjured up by an orchestra are just phenomenal. And, uh, and the sheer energy of it. Um, some of my first experiences with the All Stars Orchestra as, as a guest, um, for the first time in my life, I found myself physically in the middle of an orchestra, uh, you know, all around me. And once they get going, it's 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 overwhelming. You know, it's it's um, it's the volume. You know, people complain about rock music through loud speakers, but orchestras can be very loud. But um, the, the sheer energy and variety of, uh, of expression that is there is, is, uh, is a, such a valuable thing. So tonight, um, I have the great privilege of, uh, of, of leading a song, leading the congregation singing a song of mine called Amazing Love um, with the whole orchestra. Um, there's also a, a, a song I wrote um, during lockdown with uh, Lucy Grimble, who is part of the program tonight, and um, a song called The Cross Has Spoken. And so we'll be performing it together. Uh, we've just recorded it. So the orchestra are doing, uh, without my help, um, a choir, a song called No Need to Fear, which, I, which I, I wrote. And the other thing I think which is quite special, maybe, maybe this year, a few years ago, I had a go at um, writing uh, a different set of words for the tune Jerusalem, um, which is probably the purist might hate me for that, but um, it's, just, it's just a great tune. So um, that's going to be part of the, of the program um, uh, later on this evening as well. And I will be joining in that, but that's like with everybody, everybody joining in together in the finale. Christ is together. Oh 
This love of Christ shall flow like rivers. Come watch, come watch your guilt away. Live again. Graham Kendrick, always a favourite on Prom Praise. But there are new faces here too. This is rapper Governor B. So I'm at the Royal Albert Hall today for Prom Praise, which is actually really special for me because my dad, who passed away in 2017, wasn't really the type to go to concerts, but one of the few concerts we went to was seeing George Benson here at the Royal Albert. So I feel like he'd be very proud today. I've heard a lot about the All Souls Orchestra and I had a rehearsal with them last week and everything sounded amazing and I think the part that I play is bringing a spoken word piece uh, to tonight that conveys what the last couple of years have been like and how even though it's been challenging there is hope uh, so I'm very excited about it and also I'm not sure rap is something that they've had at um, the Royal Albert Hall for Prom Praise before so I'm very excited. I think there's an incredible diversity here. I've seen people that, you know, I grew up listening to like Graham Kendrick and Keith Getty and stuff like that. And so to be a part of it is, is a huge privilege. And hopefully there'll be a, a wide range of, of people here, old to, to young, different backgrounds. And I think that's a great representation of, of the church in the modern day. So yeah, I'm just here to, to bring a bit of a different flavor and hopefully there's a few people that like it and no one goes home while I'm on stage. <laughs> now you're very much in touch with the younger generation and every generation has its own voice. What do you see as the music for the future? I do think every generation has its own voice, um, but I don't think it's just one voice. I think every generation has a number of voices and we have to try our best to be all things to all people, otherwise there's going to be a group that feel marginalised and, and ostracised and left out. And I think tonight is, is a great representation of that, you know. My mum is a huge Graham Kendrick fan, but she's not the biggest fan of my music, so she wouldn't listen to rap. She supports what I do, but what I'm trying to say is that there's something for everyone. And in terms of where I see music going, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think the, the generation that I'm a part of, I'm actually a bit older now, but I think it's good to explore musical styles and not just, you know, this style was for yesterday and this style is today. I think it's a case of collaboration, merging them together and seeing how we can, we can work together. So I'm very excited about the future. Well, I think your mum will be very proud of you. <laughs> My mum is very proud, but the, the proudest things I've done are definitely being on Songs of Praise and tonight, <laughs> at the Royal Albert Hall for Prom Praise. So yeah. Yes, mummy, I've done it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good things of life. We thank you for harmony and unity. And we thank you how music gives us and demonstrates those qualities, how music blended together brings beautiful sounds and harmony and wonder and melody and unites worshippers and musicians and singers as they bring these gifts of music into your presence and as their means of worshipping you. Father, would you bless us? Would you continue to bless the All Souls Orchestra? Would you expand its ministry through concerts, through publications, through witness, through recordings, through online programs just such as this? 
And Father, all together we wish to use music to glorify the name of Jesus, to lift him high. And we pray that many hundreds of people through this wonderful Sunday night live program, but week by week may be drawn into your presence and through Premier Christian Radio. Father, we ask a blessing. We ask for power. We ask for hearts that are full of thanksgiving. We ask for hearts that are full of dependency on you. So day by day, this week and beyond, would you allow the music of heaven to lift our hearts, to give us excitement as we anticipate being with you. And we bring you our worship. May we worship you this day, this week, in spirit and in truth. May we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Thank you for the way you bless us now. And we ask, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds and our lives in the knowledge and love of God himself. And may music play its own part as you, Lord, bless us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who bring such life and eternity to us now, be with us all this night and forevermore. And God's people said with me, Amen. Amen. Well, what a wonderful evening and what a magnificent act of worship the All Souls Orchestra and Choir have invited us to share with them here tonight. And if you would like to enjoy the whole concert, you can find it at www.allsoulsmusic.org. And we finish now with a reminder of how prom praise has filled this Royal Albert Hall over the years with glorious music and praise. This great Charles Wesley classic comes from Prom Praise 2015. So it's goodbye from me, Pam Rhodes, and from Sunday Night Live.
And if you've enjoyed Sunday Night Live, don't forget to press the subscribe and like buttons so that your device will offer you future editions each week and recognise that this is a programme of interest to you and others.